Contractor John here today and we're going to talk about electrical boxes and fittings. Uh, you've got your basic electrical boxes. It's, this is a 1900 box. Just a standard ordinary electrical box. This is a 1900 B as in boy. B for the bracket. That's the only difference between these two. 1900, 1900 B. So you've got those two and on either one of these you, you have your plaster rings and the plaster ring sits behind these screws and slides on here and then you would be able to you'd be able to put your your device in there your outlet or your your uh, switch whatever your switch would then fit like this screws go in there okay if you're going to do an outlet you would orientate it like this and then your receptacle would go in between here like this okay now if you have a double you want a double switch or a double receptacle you'd use a double plaster ring and it goes like this on here and then you would have your switch here switch here or outlet outlet like that okay all right now, if you're going to use this up in a ceiling, like for a ceiling light or something, it would get mounted like this, up, upside down like this, and you would take this kind of ring, a fixture ring, and fasten this to the box. And again, it just hooks in, and then hooks in the bottom, and it would go like that. Okay? Now, when you're doing, when you're doing any of these plaster rings and you're putting any of them on there, there's technically a right way and a wrong way to put these things on and you always want to have you'll notice that these have hooks on them you don't want to put it on like this where if the screw ever loosened up it could it could fall off literally you always want to hang it so that the hooks hook on the screw so even if the screws loosen up or aren't tight or whatever it's not going to fall off because then that would take the outlet with it so so that is the correct way to install those okay so, and then they have, let's, in an older home where there's remodeling been going on and stuff, this box may become crammed with wires. And there's just too many wires in there to get the cover on, okay, or to get an outlet or switch in there with all the wires and everything. So what they make, it's an extension ring. And it's just basically a 1900 box without a back in it, okay. And then that would go over your screws. Like that you tighten the two screws up and that extends the box doubles the capacity of the box okay and then you'd have room for your extra wires for your receptacle and all that kind of stuff so so, so that's called an extension ring and the last kind of box that there is is an 8b 8 and the letter b is in boy 8b box you'll find this in a lot of older homes in basements and stuff uh, it's not as flexible as a 1900 box because the 1900 box you can see has three knockouts on each side and it has five on the bottom. Although this has four on the bottom, it has one on each side. And it's an, so it's not as flexible and it's smaller in diameter so it'll hold less pipes and less wire in it too. So, all right. And then you've got your blank cover for this 8B box also and it's usually typically slotted like that so this would go on here and cover that okay now in a in a situation where you've got a you've got a 1900 box and you've got this would be flush with the studs with the two by fours and then you're gonna have drywall say a paneling you have two layers of drywall you have an old house of plaster they do make rings that are extra deep this is an exaggerated one, but I wanted to show it to you. See the depth. This would be for a half inch drywall. This would be for inch of product. Rather it be 5 eighths drywall, 3 eighths paneling over that or whatever. They have different varying depths of plaster rings. Okay, So you want to make sure to match that with the finish on the wall as best you can. Okay, And then if you're in a, in a basement, a lot of times you'll see that... Uh, they're not it's a not finished and the box is mounted directly on the foundation and stuff and you'll see that they have a cover a garvin cover like this 
and that just gets screwed to the face and then your switch is behind here and it encloses the box so that you can't get to it get to the wires or whatever and then they have a receptacle one too and then they have a double for double receptacles and double switches also okay then we have what's called a handy box a gem box a brick box a remodelers box it's different names in that and you can see it's it's smaller but it's for an application where you've got to cut a hole in a drywall and put a new receptacle in where there isn't anything now okay that's why it's a little bit smaller than that and you can see on the side there's these butterflies you draw that screw up and it folds that butterfly up and it will hold it in the wall so the wall will be here and these butterflies would fold up behind my finger the drywall and that's what holds the box in the wall okay so there's another uh, a cool feature about these things here on the side here, you'll see there's this screw here if you loosen that screw up and you don't have to take it all the way out you just got to get it past the edge of the box here the side comes off you take another box and you can do the same thing to that one And again, you don't have to take screw all the way out, just get it to a point where you can slide the side out. Now you take the side off. And then what you can do is you can gang these things together. They're called gang gangable boxes. You'll see the slot here in the screw, and you just put it together. And put the other side together, right there. And you can see it comes together. And then tighten the screw up. And now you've got a double box. You could do two receptacles, two switches, or whatever. It's called a gangable handy box or gangable gem box. Okay. That's a great convenient thing to be able to do with those. So well, last we have our fittings. When you take a box, any one of these boxes, and uh, you want to run conduit, metal conduit to it. This is a connector fitting see one part of it here goes into the box and then the conduit would fit right in here take this lock nut off here insert it in the box take the lock nut on the inside and tighten it up and then take your chain locks and twist that tight like that and then that would allow you to take your conduit and then run your conduit out okay now they have other fittings too this one here, if you can see that inside of it's got a little variation on the inside, that would be for if you're going to use a Greenfield or a BX, a flexible conduit, that would allow you to take and put that inside there and then tighten the screw down and that would lock down that Greenfield in there. Okay, and again, this part here, take the lock that off and that can go right in your 1900 box. And then last of all, they have a fitting that most of the times you'll take your flexible conduit, your, your greenfield, and you'll run it from a box to uh, a can light or to through a, a wall and run it to an outside light by your door or something like that. But you don't always have to come off a box. If you use this type of fitting right here, it's called a takeoff fitting, the conduit would go in here and then you would transition immediately to your flexible Greenfield that would come right here and then that could go up to your light fixture that could go up to your light fixture or whatever it's just a takeoff fitting so well that's it that's your basic electrical boxes and fittings this is contractor john saying if you have any questions or comments visit my blog contractorjohn.com have a blessed day